Hi everyone, it's Diane with Sobatique and it's Fabric Friday. And guess what? I am sitting in front of our Batik linen. This is really a fun conversation for me is to talk about the linen because first of all, it's our latest collection. It's our newest collection. And it is, I don't know if you're a, a linen lover, but um, the, our linen is for absolutely any garment you would like to make. It's also a home decorating fabric. And I'm gonna talk about that a little bit here in a minute too. But a little bit about the fabric. Our fabric is 54 inches wide. Um, so take that into consideration when you're looking at your garment patterns and when you're doing any kind of planning with your fabric. And the linen is what I would describe, I'm wearing one by the way, um, I would describe it as a mid-weight linen and it is, to get technical, 4.8 ounces per square yard. So it really has life to it and it moves around with you and the more you wash it and dry it, um, the softer and softer and softer it gets. And it's really spectacular. Um, but you can use our linen for basically any garment application as well as home decorating. So think about um, dinner napkins, think about a table runner, think about something really, really simple that you can do with the batik linen and you will use it wherever um, you need a little style and you know it's not just for garments so I guess that's my purpose of saying that I'm going to show you some of the things that we've been doing with the linen um, as well for home decorating which is great but the care and um, finishing of a linen as if you are a linen person um, you will know that linen is not a tightly woven fabric. It is a loosely woven fabric. And so any application requires some form of seam finishing or edge finishing to it. So I always, because I have a serger, I always finish my edges with um, either a three thread overlock or I am sealing them by sewing my seam using a four thread overlock stitch. And, um, this top that I am wearing really got me to think more about French seaming. And so we're encasing the edges of our seams into the inside of our seam, which is really, really, really neat. Um, I hadn't done that in a long time, and so it was really fun to do that. But there are so many different ways to finish a linen. You can um, edge finish it with your binding along the edge of each side of your seam. Um, but whatever you do, you really do need to finish your edges or it will ravel out um, just because of its loose nature of the linen itself and how it's woven. Um, we do require, I shouldn't say require, suggest, recommend that you pre-wash your fabric. And um, I like to use a product called Synthropol. And there's two versions on our website. One is for a top load machine, which is just the regular Synthropol. And one is for a front load machine, which is um, the low foam because we don't have as much water in a front load machine. And so we just want to make sure that we don't over suds our fabric because it is a soap. So we want to make sure that we wash it um, lukewarm water, warm water, and then I do a cool rinse, shake it out, put it in the dryer till it's almost done, uh, almost dry. Um, and then I take it out when it's damp. I lay it flat so that I don't have to do any pressing before I lay out my pattern to cut out my project. So that's a little bit about the care. Um, I also use, it's a woven fabric, so I am using a top stitch needle of whatever manufacturer you love. And I use either a size eight, which is very tiny, I know that, or an 11 or a 12. Uh, anything larger than that, and you are going to put an unnecessary hole in your fabric. I was, for some reason, forgot that I had a 14 needle on my sewing machine because um, I had been making some by Annie bags and um, that was leaving some amazing holes. So we don't wanna do that. We wanna keep our needles small. And then use either polyester or cotton thread, whichever is your choice. So that's a little bit about the fabric. Um, but how about we talk a little bit about 
all of the shades that we have available in our collection, and we're going to zip to a little brief intro. Let's show you each one of these fabrics in four different groupings. And the first one here is um, a beautiful selection of deep rich shades. The first two fabrics are the lake shade, and this is the Phoenix motif, and this is hand dyed. And I'll share with you later the fear address that we made from the Phoenix Lake. The next two are the shade of Copen. And Copen, this is the Medora Flora motif and the hand dyed Copen. It's a little bit deeper in shade than the lake. The next fabric here is Lady May is the motif and the shade is Merlot. I have a top that I'll definitely share with you and it's right over here. That was just really, really simple and I made it for our um, 40 year class reunion. Crazy, 40 years. This is a beautiful, and you can see the difference in color here, but this is a hand dyed bright purple is the color. And this is our azalea, which is the rich red next to black. This is our solid black tuxedo. This is our blue collection. And the first two here are the exception to blue. They are chrome. So this is the Medora Flora and hand dyed chrome. The next is our lightest shade of what I consider blue. And this is the dusty denim. Motif is Violetta. These two are Delft. Hand dyed Delft, which is a really, really rich blue next to the Medora Flora motif. These two are the same fabrics and these two are the same fabrics. We just have a little bit less on these two bolts, but this is the Spray Twilight Blue along with the Phoenix Twilight Blue. And the last fabric over here, which is kind of hard to see, is our um, True Indigo. So it's the blue version I would say of tuxedo, but it's just, it is blue. There's a distinct difference between the blue and the black of tuxedo. And what I also have kind of sitting here now that I, I should probably mention this, but we also carry Madeira thread that matches each one of our fabric shades. So if you're ever wanting to make sure you have the right thread color, definitely um, let us know and we will help you with the right thread. And the Madeira, if you're not familiar with that, is a um, polyester and it's just a wonderful serger thread 100% polyester okay next color grouping this grouping of really deep rich fall shades is beautiful um, disregard this one we've already talked about chrome um, but this this one here is our dark brown and it's the Medora flora motif and this goes so beautifully with the hand dyed dark brown and um, it actually is the same shade that's in the inside of that Medora Flora motif. The top I'm wearing today is made from the animal skin, and this is color charcoal. These two are the same fabric. They are the Gardenies Divine Napa. And I have to tell you that this is all we have left. And I apologize for that. But we are, when we get our next shipment, um, we'll definitely be back in stock of that. So I don't have a lot of running yard, running yard of, running yardage of this one. Um, the next two are the shade of ivy. So we have the hand dyed ivy and the Medora Flora ivy. They go so great together. And we have one last group. Our last grouping it's the beautiful pastels, and I just um, I just love these. I have a top made out of the mint. The first two over here are mint, and this is the Violetta motif and the hand eye coordinate. This is our um, sage, and this is the Medora Flora motif with a coordinate of hand eyed as well. I just love the combination of being able to have a coordinate with each colorway. The next one is Violetta Sachet Pink, and it's coordinate. And the little bit left we have of our Gardenies Divine Lilac with its coordinate, the hand-dyed lilac. 
And I also, you know, you can see how working a lot of these together would be beautiful in a garment. And the sachet pink kind of has a corally um, feel to it. And so it works really nicely with the inside of the motif of the lilac Gardenese Divine. So those are the four groupings of our batik linen. In addition to the fabric, I really want to share with you a few projects that I think would be wonderful for the linen. So also look in your pattern selections that you have at home and just think about what can I do with the linen and what can I um, add to your collection for the fall season. And the one thing that I want to share with you is the garment I'm wearing right now. This is new and I haven't done a pattern review yet, but I will. And this is the Remy raglan top. I'm going to stand up so you can kind of see it, but it's just a really, really loose fitting top. And the pattern actually is for, it has multiple sleeve options and two different necklines. Here's the front of the pattern. And it is a short sleeve, three quarter sleeve, or the long sleeve. And then I did the gathered version at the end. And um, I was thinking it was gonna be a little bit longer, but it's perfect for when I'm in the office and working on cutting fabric or doing whatever. And I just really love the, the neckline and the loose fittingness. I was worried about this one because the ease on this shirt is about 10 to 12 inches. So it is not form fitting in the least and it's comfortable. I'm also gonna make it a little bit longer. It this as I made this pattern as instructed and it is about 24 inches long. So I believe it's intended to be a shorter top. Um, I might make it a few inches longer, but I really love it. It is the most comfortable top. So definitely give this a shot. And the pattern size is from zero to 20. The garment that I have right back over here is, it is a tank tunic length. And I made that really quickly. And it's a new look pattern. And I think the new look is it's for a woven and then it also you can make this out of a knit as well. But it is 6517. And I simply made this cute little version right here, but made it longer. I wanted it to just kind of fit over my hips. Um, and then I wore some capri pants with it. And I it just, it's really a comfortable top and you just toss it on. And I think it would be a great dress just to lengthen it like it is here. Um, it has very little shape. So it is a straight A-line and it does have darts. This pattern is from a size 10 to a 22. The other garments I wanna show you here is, and I think I've shown you this before. This is the Fear Dress and um, by Liesl and Company. And it also has a top and I never really got a chance to finish making the top version of this, but it is just a simple, simple garment. My trick for the, or my learning experience on this particular pattern was really perfecting how to work on the yoke, um, the front and back yokes and um, a very, very interesting way to finish that. And I have a, uh, YouTube pattern review and a little bit of an instruction guide on our YouTube channel as well for this particular pattern. Um, but it is spectacular in linen. I also have it in our tuxedo black. So I have a really nice black linen dress. The other, um, I want to show you three more dresses really, really quickly. I have not made them, but I really, I think they're just perfect for linen. This, this is a new one to me and it is the McCall 7862. Look at that dress. How cute is that? And I think I might've shown this for our rayon last Friday, but this is so fun. And um, it also, again, has a raglan sleeve. I think it's so comfortable. Actually, I think this is the one I'm gonna set aside for another dress out of the linen. A more tailored dress that I think can be worn for formal um, events, more formal events, um, is this Simplicity 9223. Look at this dress. It has side pin tucks to it. It does have a zipper and um, pocket options for you as well. But isn't that beautiful? I just think it's so stylish. 
And here is the comfort garment of the day, which is Simplicity 8912. Look at this dress. I mean, I know it takes a lot of fabric, but how fun would that be just to, you could have it, uh, you know, just around your house or just lounging whenever you're running errands. Um, I don't know if I'd have it quite all the way to the floor, but how cute is that? I just think that would be a wonderful, wonderful way to use the linen. I'm gonna share with you a couple of jackets as well. The, I did make, and hopefully I can put a picture up here. I made a linen easy rolled edge kimono. Um, most of you are familiar with that uh, free download that we have on our website. I have the flight kind of running around here. Um, that uh, is instructions on how to use your serger using a three thread rolled hem. And it's so easy to make these kimonos just to throw on. And so download that. I created a version for linen as well. And I made it out of our hand-dyed lake. And again, I'll put a picture up here on the screen so that you can see that. But it's just a great way to use, I think it was just a, a yard and a quarter or a yard and a half is all I needed of that because it's 54 inches wide. But the other topper that I have spent some time working with this pattern um, over this last week, and we really did a huge promotion on our rayon and our uh, Batik rayon wraps for this pattern, which is the Anytime Topper by Amy Barrickman. And this also would be spectacular in linen at any length. And now this is available in two size groupings. Well, the pattern is all inclusive, but it has, um, you can customize it to your size grouping and then three different lengths. You can make it any length you want. Um, so I also did a um, pattern review of this on our channel as well. And the other jacket I want to share with you is one that we've we've used a lot for rayon. And I just, I saw this again when I was getting organized here, and I really think it would be nice. Um, it is the comfortable, um, it's a Buttrick pattern by Connie Crawford, and it's the 5473. There's not a lot of Connie Crawford uh, patterns like this out there anymore, I don't think. But this is a, um, it says it's a modern fit for the ready to wear style. And look at the simplicity of that jacket. And the vest, I've made both of these out of our rayon using a long border batik, which is really nice when you can use the fabric itself to really make the style of your garment. And when I'm thinking linen, I'm also thinking very unstructured. I mean, like, I'm not going to make the linen a, a really, really tailored jacket. I mean, it's not something for me personally, but wearing a really nice fitting jacket like this um, is really, I think, perfect for the linen and the weight of the linen as well. Um, the other, let's see... The other one I want to share with you is the pants. I have been promising to make these pants forever. I already picked up fabric. I've already washed fabric. And I think it's time for me to do this. And these are this is the free range slacks, again, by um, So House and So House 7. And this is sizes 0 to 20, confident beginner, elastic waistband, pockets, it should be really simple to do. And look at the back, because because even the simple back style is really neat too. So I think I'm gonna have to put this on my have to finish list and um, find this and finish it. Okay, so those are the garment things that I wanted to share with you for the linen. Linen is not only for garments. And I don't know about you, but I think it's really very special to have linen as part of my home decorating. And I've always loved linen napkins, some of the most common things, linen napkins, a tablecloth, a table runner, um, things like that, that are made from a linen. And so I'm gonna put up a picture here of our table, our dining room table in our home. And I have been in our home deck collection of things, um, putting together this table setting. And the base of the table setting is our 115 inch wide Garden East Divine waning autumn fabric. 
And I selected it because it matches and coordinates with our chairs. I have a green in the chairs that I really wanted to coordinate with. Because if I use a juniper color or hunter color, it is, um, it clashes terribly. And so I really was focused on trying to find a fabric that would coordinate with that. And then I started to build on that with the china that I wanted to have on the table, which is a beautiful um, white base to it. And it has these leaves embossed on it and etched on it. And, um, but the white in the plate sitting on top of the creamy background of the tablecloth was just too distracting and too busy and um, really didn't have a focal point. And so I decided to come in here and try to match some linen. So I found our uh, brown and our ivy and they go with, because there's a little hint of, you get into some um, cinnamony reddish tones in here and that really went with some of the burgundy, the hint of burgundy that's in the, in the cotton tablecloth. So I decided to make coordinating napkins. And so I just surged. These are 18 inch napkins and I was able to get from the 54 inch wide fabric, I was able to get three 18 inch napkins out of a 20 inch strip of linen. So I made three brown and I have three in the ivy and I just used a um, three thread overlock to finish the edges and then tucked in my my threads on each corner. I mean, it takes a little patience just to get all the threads tied and stuck inside and fray checked so that you don't have any issues with your threads. And they really match the table beautifully. But then I had another little dilemma. My china just, um, it just blended too much. So what I did, I am a fan of chargers. I love to put um, a plate on top of a charger. It just adds, instead of having a place mat, I just wanted something that was circular and simple and just gave that separation level. And um, as you can see in the picture, I made these chargers and um, don't laugh at me, but I took, there. I made them on a brown and it's our linen, okay? And what I did is, this is the original charger. I use it for Christmas and holidays. And I simply took and marked an ov or a circle all the way around. I surged the edge because I like to finish linen. I really want no fraying. I surged the edge just like I did the napkin all the way around. And then I went back and I took our um, black thread, uh, elastic thread, wound it in the bobbin and, and just stitched all the way around the outside of this circle, putting the elastic thread on. So it looks like a little shower cap, but when you add it to or cover up your charger, or you can do this on any plate you might have in your house that you, that's just a, maybe a little bit larger than the plate that you have on your table so that you can get that level of accent. But once you slide it back on, see, <laughs> you have a charger that just matches your table that you are setting. So you can make these in any colorway um, to match your table. So I can have some for spring, I'll change the coloring and, and things like that. So that's what I'm using our linen for because it was the right shade. I didn't have the right shade in any other fabric and um, it works beautifully and gives it that really elegant look. And I also used the Ivy as a table uh, runner down the center of the table to accent what I wanted to set my center pieces with. And also, again, gave that separation and calmed down the tablecloth a little bit. So. That's what I um, am also doing with our linen. And I just think there's so many applications for it. So never limit yourself to what's traditionally used for any of the fabrics that you might have in your home. Um, and just as a little treat, I'm gonna share with you, I made these leaves that match the, the, the embossing on the actual dishes themselves on the china. I made these out of our Nuance Gradation cotton, and um, I'll have that on our website, a little simple little tutorial of how to make your shape and 
fuse them and use your sewing machine and stitch up the, the little veins in the middle of it. And I use that as an accent all over the table instead of going outside and finding leaves or, or purchasing um, um, imitation uh, garland or leaves or whatever to put on the table. So I just thought it would be a fun way to use fabric. So anyway, um, thank you so much for sharing uh, your time with me here on our Fabric Friday. And um, I really appreciate it so very much. And I hope that you enjoy this. Oh, I do have a question. I would love to get some comments on um, one thing because this was our first collection of batik linen. So here's what I want from you. Let us know what color or shade or family or idea you would like out of our next grouping or a future grouping. And what are we missing? What are you looking for? What, what would really help you with your garment collection or your table settings or whatever you would like to use the linen for? So in the comments below, give us a little suggestions and some hints and um, we'll take it from there. We love building what we have on what you would like and so definitely take a moment to do that as well. But until next time, keep sewing, smiling, and sharing.